Video Lecture 4, Periodic Trends. When we move across the periodic table, remember that if we're looking at it, the periodic table has our metals on the left side and our non-metals on the right, separated, of course, by the metalloids, which are on the staircase. Well, when we take a look, we would say that metallic properties tend to increase as we move left on the periodic table. So if we start here and move left, it would make sense that elements would become more metallic as we move towards the metal side of the table. We also talk about metallic properties increasing as we move down the table, meaning that it's going to be easier for them to do some of these, some of these things. We say non-metallic properties tend to increase as we move to the right, and again, this should make sense to you, because as we, if we start over here, as we move as we move to the right side of the table, we start and move into the non-metals. So as we move to the right and as we move up on the periodic table, we see an increase in metallic, non-metallic properties. These properties are based on the ability for metals to lose electrons and non-metals to gain electrons. So the characteristics of atoms are going to vary systematically as we move throughout the table. Uh, it means predictably. So we're going to be able to predict things about atomic size, ion size, ionization energy, and electron affinity. So let's take a look and talk about the effects of electromagnetic forces. One of the things to keep in mind is when we talk about the nucleus versus electrons, the nucleus is positively charged while the electrons are negatively charged. Remember, the nucleus is made up of those protons and those neutrons. Well, the neutrons don't affect charge, and the electrons in the electron cloud are negative. The effect on this, or the result, is that they are going to attract. The more protons and the more electrons there are, the stronger the forces there are pulling the electrons towards the nucleus. So if we talk about one proton and one electron pulling on each other, they're going to be able to exert a force. But now if we've got two protons pulling on two electrons, the force is going to be stronger. If we have four protons pulling on four electrons, they're going to be able to pull even stronger. What this can lead to is a phenomenon called electron shielding. This is caused by inner electrons essentially shielding and preventing that, those forces of attractions from reaching the valence shells. This, what this does is this allows the valence electrons to move farther away from the nucleus. Electron shielding is going to increase as we move down a group. If we take a look at hydrogen here, it's got one energy level, so this is a, this is a very small area. Here, now that we have two energy levels in sodium, we're going to be able to shield slightly more because we're going to have this first energy level full, and it's going to be able to pull on that nucleus a little bit more. Now that we come down to energy level 3 with sodium, now we've got all these electrons in energy level 1 and energy level 2 shielding that electromagnetic force from the valence electron, which is out here. This concept of electrons and protons pulling on one, each other, on one another because of their different charges helps us to determine and helps us to predict our atomic size. One of the easiest ones to look at is that atomic size is going to increase as we move down the group. The reason we say that that's easier to predict is that think about when we're doing electron configurations. As we go from period one, there's only one energy level. In period two, in period two, there's two energy levels. 
period three, there's three energy levels. Four, five, six, seven. So as we add energy levels, it makes sense that the atom is going to get bigger. But now what's going to happen is that atoms get smaller as they move across the period. The nuclear charge is going to increase. So from sodium, which is has 11 protons in the nucleus, to magnesium that has 12 protons in the nucleus, we're going to get more attraction from the nucleus, so it's going to actually get a little bit smaller. And that's going to be very similar to when we see across each of the periods. We can see that fluorine is smaller than chlorine, which is smaller than which is smaller than chlorine, carbon, which is smaller, this, sorry, this should be oxygen. Fluorine is smaller than oxygen, which is smaller than nitrogen, which is smaller than carbon, boron, beryllium, and lithium. So our atomic size is going to decrease as we move across. Now, ionic size, ions, remember, are atoms that have gained or lost electrons. So, ions are going to be smaller if they lose electrons. So these are going to be metals. Metal ions are going to be smaller because they lose an electron. They're going to form cations. They are going to be the positive ions. One of the ways that I remember it, cation, cats, are positive. Get it? Cats are positive. You should be laughing hysterically right now. Ions are going to be larger if they gain electrons. So these are going to be our nonmetal ions. If they gain electrons, they're going to be negative. They're going to be called anions. And anion, A, N, ion, the N stands for negative. So a negative ion and cats are positive. Now ionization energy is the energy required to remove an electron. It is a measurement on how strongly an atom is going to hold on to its valence electrons, or its outermost electrons. Now ionization energy is going to decrease as you move down a group. And I like to talk about this looking at a football analogy. Here, running with the ball, the ball is right next to the body. So in this case, the body is going to be our nucleus, and the ball is going to be our valence electrons. So with the valence electrons being so close to the body, this is going to have a high ionization energy. It's going to take a large amount of energy to get that ball out of there. Ladies, you kind of think about this. Uh, instead, if we don't want to look at a football analogy, we could talk about your purse. If you're carrying your purse very close to your body, it's very difficult for somebody to steal it. As we move down the p as we move down the group, the valence shell gets farther away. Just like here, this the ball is farther away from the body. So the valence shell has moved farther away. This is going to have a slightly lower ionization energy. It's going to take less energy. So ladies, if we move your purse from your shoulder down to your elbow, it becomes a little bit easier to steal it. As we get bigger, and that valence shell gets farther away from the body, gets farther away from the nucleus, this is going to be the least, have the least ionization energy. This is going to take the least amount of energy to steal away. 
Ladies, this would be like if you were walking down the street with your purse and you were holding your purse by the straps as far away from your body as you could. It's not going to take much energy to get those electrons taken away. So our ionization energy, we're going to notice, is going to increase as we move across. Remember, this is tied to the fact that atoms get smaller. So that valence cell is going to get closer and closer, and it's going to increase moving up, because again, that atom is getting smaller. You could think about this conversely and say that it decreases going down because the atom gets larger, if you'd like. So. As we move to the right, our ionization energy increases. As we move up, the ionization energy increases. One of the other things that we're going to take a look at is ionization energy of different elements. So if you notice, magnesium is going to require 738 kilojoules of energy to remove one electron. So this is our first ionization energy. If we wanted to steal a second electron from magnesium, it's going to take 1,451 kilojoules of energy to get that second ionization energy. If we were to try to steal a third electron from magnesium, we would require 7,700 kilojoules. So notice, each subsequent ionization energy is going to be increasing. Electron affinity is the energy change that's associated with the addition of an electron. What we're going to see is that affinity tends to increase across a period and decrease down a group. And this should, start ma this should make sense that the electron, that atoms, as we start to approach a full octet, there's going to be, they're going to help, they're going to want to gain electrons. <coughs> if they're metals, they're going to want to lose electrons. So this is going to have a low affinity versus a higher affinity. We're also going to decrease as we move down, this should say group, sorry. So as that valence shell gets farther and farther away, affinity is going to decrease. So it's related to how many electrons are needed to fill the outer energy level. The closer we get to that full octet, the, more, the, uh, the higher affinity they're going to want. However, it is irregular. Non-metals have a high affinity. Metals have a low affinity. And noble gases have the lowest affinity. Can you think of why? So again, here's our trend. We're going to see an increase. Notice ionization energy and electron affinity have basically the same trend. Electronegativity is the measure of an atom's ability to draw electrons to itself when it's in a compound. So that's one of the things to keep in mind. This has to do with making a compound. This trend should actually probably be the easiest for you to look at because on our periodic table, this small number on the bottom cell is our electronegativity. So we'll be able to see it increases across a period or decrease or stay the same within a group. So if you take a look, lithium has an electron affinity of 1, and as we go across, we go steadily increasing to 4. And we'll see a decrease from 1 to 0.9 to 0.8 to 0.8 to 0.8 to 0.7 as we move down a group. And we'll see the same trend. 4 to 3 to 2.8 to 2.5. Hydrogen is unique and be considered all by, itself, all by itself because, number one, it can lose electrons. It can gain electrons. It can share electrons. And it can, act, and it can bond with other hydrogen atoms. So taking a look, our chemical activity. Our active metals are going to react by forming cations. 
the most active metals are going to be those that can easily lose an electron. Our active nonmetals are going to react by forming anions. Most active nonmetals have those which tend to gain electrons. And so remember, our most active metals will probably be our alkali metals because one valence electron. Our most, re our most active nonmetals are probably going to be our halogens because they're going to loot, they only need to gain one electron. So, if we take a look here, pause the video lecture and fill in this table. So if we take a look, all of our active metals are going to have low ionization energy, low electronegativity, low electron affinity. Our active nonmetals are going to have high electron affinity, high electronegativity, and high ionization energy.